The U.S. Treasury bill is a discount instrument. That means that today we would pay some cash price with the expectation to redeem the face value of $100 in the near-term future. And I'm going to assume 90 days. So there's no coupons between cash price paid and the face value received. The quote might be, in my example, 8, which is $8 or 8% of the $100 face value. How do we translate that quote price into the cash price and also translate the quote and cash price into the true interest rate on the U.S. Treasury bill? A classic example of a discount instrument is a U.S. Treasury bill. The U.S. Treasury bill is a money market instrument as opposed to a capital market instrument. And by money market instrument, we mean debt with a maturity of one year or less. So a money market instrument like the U.S. Treasury bill is short-term debt as opposed to a long-term capital instrument. So the face value would be $100. And then I'll assume a typical maturity for my U.S. Treasury bill of 90 days. Then the quoted price here, which I will denote Q, might be, for example, 8, which is really $8. Or you can see 8% of the face value. And here arises the confusion or why this is, at first, hard to understand. The quote represents a discount on the face value. And so it's not the true rate of interest. What that means is that the cash price of this treasury bill here is the face value less the quoted discount. But the discount of $8 or 8% as usual is in per annum terms. This is a general rule in interest rates. We always tend to quote the inputs and outputs in per annum terms. But this is a 90-day instrument. And so the cash price is the face value of 100 minus the $8 quote, hence the term discount instrument, but that $8 is per annum, so it gets multiplied by 90 over 360, or just this is a clean one-fourth, to get the true dollar discount of $2. So that's the cash price. We are paying $98 with the expectation to redeem in 90 days the full face value of 100. So I also have in here, I go take a full round trip back to the quoted price as a function of this cash price right here. So here, this is the formula that given the cash price of 98 solves back for the quoted price. And I'm showing that because this is the formula John Hole shows in chapter six, and that's generally my sequence. So we've, um, we've said here that the quoted price is equal to 360 divided by n multiplied by the face value of 100 minus the cash price of the bond. That's the expression John Hull shows. I personally find it less intuitive, but it does solve for the quoted price as a function of the cash price. And this might be a good time to just to note or be mindful of the day count convention that is implicit here. In a previous video, I covered day count conventions. There are basically three. We can have actual to actual. We can have 30 to 360, where every month is assumed to have 30 days, and the year, therefore, 360. The third option is what is used by U.S. Treasury bills and money market instruments, at least in the United States, and that is the actual to 360 day count convention. So, right, that's what we're using here because that is the convention for U.S. money market instruments. So, my interest in dollar terms you can see here is really obvious. I pay $98 today. I will receive in 90 days back the redemption of 100 the difference is $2 in interest over the 90 days. And so we have what Hull calls the true rate of interest and what might be called the yield. What might fairly be called the yield. You can see is the $2 in interest divided by the $98 cash price paid. That's 2.041%, but it's not in per annum terms. It's just a simple interest rate over 90 days. So 
The best term for that is the simple interest rate. And then you will notice it is necessarily greater, this 2.041, the true rate of interest, is necessarily greater than uh, the 2% that is one-fourth of the 8%. And that's part of John Hull's point and why the discount rate can be confusing or a bit of a misnomer. It's not the true interest rate. Now further, it's not in per annum terms. How would we get that? Well, we could simply note that the cash price, denoted P, if we were to grow that at the true rate of interest, which I'll denote Y, but scaled by uh, the number of actual days N divided by 360, right, that that should equal $100. And so that then if we then solve for the Y here, the true rate of interest, I can take 100 divided by the P, divided by P on both sides, subtract the one, and then that quantity gets multiplied by 360 divided by N, solving for the true rate of interest. And you can see that formula is in Excel here such that my true rate of interest here is 8.163% and it is necessarily greater than the 8% associated with the quote. That's part of the point here. And we can also show, I won't show the derivation, but we can also solve for the true rate of interest here, y, as directly a function of the quoted rate of interest in percentage terms. So if we take quote divided by per, quote in percentage terms, that's the 8%. And we divide that by 1 plus the quoted percent multiplied by n over 360. That will also get me the 8.163%. And finally, uh, in the spreadsheet, just one technical note, the discount rate is also the present value of the yield. So if I can solve for that quote percent, in which case this is our 8% is actually going to be equal to the yield or true rate of interest, but discounted at the yield. So I think that's a very interesting property. So finally, I'll just apply this once more with an actual question holes end of chapter 6.8. And here's the question. The price of a 90-day treasury bill is quoted as 10. So that's our quote. What continuously compounded return on an actual to 365 basis does an investor earn on the treasury bill for the 90-day period? Okay, so similar in assumptions, face value of 100, 90 days to maturity, same thing. The only difference here is our quote is 10 or $10 or 10%. So that means our cash price. Now you can, if a little, with a little bit of practice, you can start to do this part almost in your head. Our cash price then, if the quote is 10, is simply the 100 face, and we subtract, right, the applicable fraction of the quote. In this case, 90 out of 360 is a clean one fourth or 0.25. So we take, we're subtracting one fourth of the $10 or $2 and 50 cents from the face to get the cash price of 97.50. That means the interest is 200 is $2 and 50 cents over 90 days or 2.564% true rate of interest over the 90 days. And then as before, we can convert that true rate of interest into per annum, a per annum true rate of interest of 10.256. However, there's two differences between this number and the number that is asked for in John Hull's question. And the first is that implicitly, this is with compound, uh, with compound, with quarterly compound frequency, as opposed to continuously compound frequency. So implicitly, this is with four periods per year as opposed to continuously. And then also, per the money market, U.S. Money Market Day Count Convention, this is in actual to 360, not in the requested actual to 365 day basis. 
so that what I would need to do here is first take my 250 divided by my cash price that gives me um, an actual interest rate but I am going to convert it into that quarterly compound frequency into a continuous interest rate and so with that expression I get 10.127 as the true rate of interest with continuous with continuously compound frequency however I'm still on an actual to 360 basis such that I would need to multiply that by 365 divided by 360 to convert it to a continuously compounded return on an actual to 365 basis so that final two steps there are a bit technical but that um, at least explain uh, it answers whole 6.8 if you found this video helpful please subscribe to the channel we'd love to have you come back thanks